I remember it as, as it were yesterday. The air was electric with expectation. For we had spent day and night trying to make up for the lack of fulfilling the requirements of a dispensation for which our guru had committed his spiritual achievements. He had put his own ascension up as collateral and we had failed to meet the responsibility. We had spent the better part of a year, 12 months, decreeing day and night, and many of you were part of that labor. Now we were told that debt was paid, and our beloved El Moria was to speak to us once again. As I said, the air was electric with expectation and love. For the love had grown as hour after hour we decreed to redeem our failure. We prepared the force field with song and decrees, and now the moment came to hear again our beloved master. His first words were, my beloved Chilas, I am unbenched. And you can imagine what went on from there for a few minutes, the tremendous joy and shouting of thanks and praise and victory and so on. It was, it was a moment I will never forget. Then when everything quieted down, he said, by the grace of the Divine Mother Mary, by the mercy of the Divine Mother Kuan Yin, by their intercession and by the extraordinary devotion of you, my chilas and my messengers, I am indeed unbenched. And now I pray for my extraordinary chilas to also be unbenched. Oh, it is the 11th hour, beloved. And so, ere this day conclude, I address Chila's mind. And I come in the victory of the, sa of the seven, sacred seven who did di dictate their founding words on August 7th, 1958, in the city of Philadelphia. Oh, beloved, when you hear them, you shall indeed cherish those words and come to understand that the founding flame of the Summer Lighthouse, may it never be extinguished. It is the flame of divine love. And in this hour, beloved, and in these 12 months, you have shown that utter love and devotion and you have come into an inner alignment with the will of God and my diamond heart. Though this has been for your messenger the longest year of many centuries, I tell you for me, I did live it second by long second and did not yet learn, beloved, the quality of patience to forbear, to be up and doing with my own. Now that I am, you may give to me 12 labors of Hercules and more, even as I give the same to you. Oh, beloved, now the fun and the work begins. So let me enumerate my causes, beloved, for they are just and merciful and gracious unto our God. Won't you be seated in my presence and in this ovoid of light as though you were with me in my Darjeeling palace? 
Yes, beloved, I do live in luxury. Lux fiat, let there be light and let there be abundant light. Though the stable will keep here below, yet the palace awaits each and every noble royal son and daughter of God. And for the true light and the fiat of the light, beloved, no one ought to wait for that light is here and now, and there is nowhere else to be. So cherishment is the flame we hold dear. Surely we have come to understand a greater love, if there could be, and a greater need. And so many things have passed by the way when the one thing that one loves most may be taken from one. Is it not so, beloved, that all else pales into insignificance and preciousness, first of life itself, and secondly, of service becomes the all-consuming passion. You have not only a palace of light in Darjeeling, but a home of great light and a palace of peace, and sometimes more on the God star Sirius. Now, how long have we dreamed of what it would be like to be on the other side? How long have we dreamed about what it would be like to live in a building? And what is your picture of the building? In the Christian hymns throughout the history, they have talked about that palace on high. But most of us probably never thought of ourselves as having a palace on the other side. But note what the master just said. That we will have a palace of light, not only in jar dealing, but palace of peace, one of each of us, one for each of us, and sometimes more, he said, on the God star Sirius. Do you see it? Do you see what it looks like? You see, every time we have an incarnation, all the good goes, goes up to building that palace. And we have a palace and maybe more there on the God Star series. It's a beautiful thought and a wonderful assurance of all that we go through here. We will eventually reach up there and, you know, I like to think, you know, you see a sign every now and then on a little Volkswagen, the, the license behind says, my other car is a Cadillac. Well, so we say here, my four room house that I live in, <laughs> that's okay because you ought to see my palace on the other side. That's what I'm building at every moment of my life. He says, we can wait if heaven can wait. For we would rather be about our father's victory, is it not so? Our father's victory on earth right now is the, the time, right now is the essence, right now is where we need to put our thrust and our energy. He says, and I claim you as my children, my chilas, my sons and daughters. Let us have the victory on earth of the will of God and not lose the opportunity for Aquarius to have a golden age. In St. Germain's name, I say it, and I claim you for that victory, that golden age of Aquarius. <clears throat> now let us see, beloved, that the order of the day is to secure this church, of which I also say, Lux Fiat. In the name of Jesus Christ, the gates of hell shall not prevail against 
this my church and your church. They have little time to prevail. Therefore, they try all the harder, yet to no avail. For the Lord our God is mighty in our midst, and he is in our midst tonight, the Holy One of God, the abiding presence of this altar. Behold, the witness of our God, beloved. The Modreds come out from their holes and hiding. They have their day and they must play their part. Thus, let the word go forth. Let the light descend. Let the work attest. Let those who deal ignobly with my own, those who are the ignoble, and let them also know it as they so act so they do shorten their own life stream and their own crystal cord. And therefore they need not be given the rope, for they take it and they do take that rope of opportunity. And instead of climbing that rope to the heart of God, they hang themselves by their own words and their works. Therefore, let them have their say, for the God's decree will not fail. By their words, they shall be justified. By their words, they shall be condemned. And we have been taught that every one of us have been given a certain amount of light. And if we take the right road, we build that light and we build an eternity. But if we take the wrong road, we lose that light a little by little every day that we work with evil until the point at which we become nothing at all. Thus, beloved, he says, until such entities are exposed, until they take their stand, there does not come the descent of karma nor the judgment. And unless this be done, beloved, the worldwide expansion of this community of the Holy Spirit cannot and does not take place. Therefore, let the betrayers perform their work of infamy. Therefore, let us be exorcised from them by the Holy Spirit. And let us turn our attention to the following. There are at least one million potential chilas of the will of God in this world who are ready to enter in. Yet they are held back, beloved, by the very burden of the karma of the world. These potential chilas are those who are just like you and can be polished up and shined up and cleared up, purified and made white just as you have been. Thus understand that you are reaching the momentum in the building of your own dwellers on the threshold, whereby there soon shall be broken down barriers of hate and hate creation and all false reporting and untrue spoken. When the inner fiery core of this movement reaches that crescendo, as you have been moving toward it and have achieved my glorious freedom this day, you will then know the blessed expansion that God has decreed. But it is indeed a race between light and darkness. Therefore, I bring to your attention how many are held back by drugs and must be prayed for. Others, beloved, by rock music and even Satanism and the misguided entering into the practices or the worship of Satan or of psychism or of witchcraft or of black magic. 
beloved ones, the reality between absolute light and absolute darkness is that moment of the razor's edge. And therefore, come to understand that this church is meant in this hour and in this day for one million other souls who could enter in if they were cut free. Thus, my first labor that I give to you is the cry to the Father, Mother, God for them, as you have called for me that they might be cut free and drawn in before it is too late. This is my prayer. And this is the key whereby St. Germain shall have the assurance that after that which takes place, there will be those who may rise to bring that great golden age of Aquarius that will mean so great a manifestation to this system of worlds, this galaxy and all of cosmos. To have Earth as a planet where the golden age does appear, beloved, can turn the tide for many systems of worlds, because as you have been told, there are representatives in embodiment on Earth today from all of those systems of worlds who will be affected. Therefore, the good karma for so great a victory is vast. And the burden of such a potential defeat is unthinkable. Yet we who meet in council must deal with that possibility and the possibility of that eventuality. Therefore, come to understand, beloved, that as you place your attention upon those who are in for far more serious plights of karma and psychology than yourselves, as you lose yourselves in making the calls day after day for their freedom, you shall discover a wholeness coming into yourself. For the selflessness of this service does create the vacuum and the Holy One of God, the I am that I am, the Holy Christ self, does descend into your temple. Is it not then a most worthy experience to pray for brothers and sisters who are a part of this mandala, to recreate, therefore, the force field, the magnet, for the completion of 144,000 who are the nucleus, <clears throat> and then to add the remaining million who can come in. This is our goal. And you have a twofold priority. And remember this it is the altar of God, the Alpha and the preparation for physical survival, the Omega. These two activities of your life demand all of your love and all of your attention and all else in between, beloved, must surely be only those activities that lead to these two goals. And as you assemble here, the works that can be done in invocation are tremendous, as you have seen. And the lords of karma have looked upon this great outpouring of heaven in answer to your call. They have looked upon the call and the mighty intercessory prayers and fiats continuing on the part of the messenger enforced by yourselves, and they also who look upon all of the karma of the earthly evolution have derived new hope by your demonstration, beloved. Therefore, I come to give you a sense of co-measurement regarding how so great a worth of your, as your presence, how so great a worth as your presence 
and your voice has truly been the culmination whereby I, even I myself, not expecting it, could be unbenched in this hour. Truly, O oh beloved, it is the tremendous gift of yourselves and the response of hierarchy and yourselves cut free in so many ways from that personal dweller. You have become a chalice, strengthened, living, and crystal far beyond that which was present only one year ago. Now then, value. Value what you have created out of yourself and do not let that chalice fall into disuse, for we have put many on the rung. <clears throat> but beloved, in addition, many others have been aroused. You think they are aroused by this and that occurrence by this and that reporting, beloved ones. This is something that is a side effect. They are aroused, beloved, by the light. Lux fiat. They are indeed aroused by the light, beloved, and that light presses in and it does create a pressure. And if they are not about to bend the knee and confess that light as the universal Christos, then they must take their stand against it and do so swiftly, for they shall be devoured by the light unless they bend the knee to that light. Have you not seen this in the news lately? Have you not seen this in operation in our government? In the fallen ones as they do such stupid stuff and say such stupid things and un unreal things. Now, beloved, you have a situation whereby many who are not ready for the for choices, absolute good and evil, nevertheless, have been polarized by their own inner fears and doubts their own records of injustice polarized, therefore, against you when they ought to have been polarized and magnetized to you. We then know that those who have had their allegiance to darkness for eons will not change. We do not endeavor to convert them, for we know that our God has declined that they be converted. They therefore receive the Holy Ghost and the judgment of the Holy Ghost, for they are the violators of the cloven tongues of fire in their bodies, in their minds, in their souls, in their hearts. Therefore, set them aside but continue to make calls that they be bound and held inactive and dealt with by the legions of blue flame under Archangel Michael. It is necessary, beloved, for they do not, for I'm sorry, for they do unbind themselves and of necessity must be bound again and again. Yet in every day that they work the works of darkness, their life stream, the very quotient of energy descending from the Most High God is diminished by percentages. And this is the judgment that can be enacted, and that is enacted in answer to your call, increment by increment of 1% or 10% and so forth. You meet people on the street who are more dead than alive. You can see it around them and in their actions. They're almost, they're almost dead. They don't have much left. 
Beloved, it is those in whom there burns a threefold flame and yet who have not nourished it by devotion and adoration, who are easily swept aside by the remaining magnetism of the fallen ones and their cunning in their lying. Therefore, let those in whom there burns the spark of divine receive your attention beginning with those who have the greatest light on planet Earth and those who have the greatest potential to be chilas of the will of God. Decree for them and measure upon measure expand that decree to include greater numbers of those who, if they knew better, if they understood, if they were delivered of the burdens of the lies of the fallen ones, would begin to understand and to study the great teachings of the Ascended Masters and the lost teachings of Jesus. Therefore, dispel the doom and gloom consciousness whereby you believe that you are an isolated group of individuals uniquely capable of understanding this path. I tell you, had not the Christian churches totally rejected the true path of individual Christhood these 2,000 years, I would not be speaking to you about one million potential chilas. I would be speaking to you about all of Christendom. For I tell you, beloved, had that light been apparent and that path been walked, their advancement would be such and their understanding of the tempter and the temptation that they would have come so close to the hem of Christ's garment as to recognize it instantly the moment they would find one of the precious books published by the messengers and yourselves. Therefore, know, beloved, that we are accelerating the progress of all souls who are in the theric temples in this hour. We give them courses that intensify their self-awareness in Christ. And we prepare them to take embodiment fully armed with all the teachings of the messengers that the messengers teach both at inner levels and in their books. And do you know, beloved, we use those very books because the content is so acceptable to those who have recently come out of this civilization. Now, beloved, as you can well imagine, we look to an earth that can receive these souls whom we are preparing. Our plans are vast for the incarnation of these ones who if left alone by the fallen ones, and left unobstructed in their own soul's awareness by a false hierarchy and an orthodox that is dead and long dead, they will enter. They will claim that Christ's flame. They will claim their mighty I am presence. And you might find yourselves, even their leaders, hastening to catch up with, their fo with your followers as one among you was one to say one fine day. Blessed ones, remember, remember the call. Remember the call of the ancient ones and you who in your own lifetimes have held the staff of the great white brotherhood even in this century. And rejoice that we have drawn to this community some of the best spiritual lights of the centuries. There are others we must gather. Beloved, one thing is certain. I must remain unbenched. Therefore, I am ready for the labors of Hercules. Are you now ready, beloved? Would we not have our reach exceed our grasp? Would we not believe, I mean, would we not, beloved, do more? For after all, once we secure our place, not one of us 
that does breathe the breath of the Holy Spirit this night with desire to see the cause for which we have fought for so long lost because the gods are determined to have their last war, their turf, their turf war to see who gets the earth for the next 2000 years. So the rivalry of these serpents is something beyond belief. And they are so blinded in their lust for power and their lust for territory and their lust for the control of your souls that they have missed the point. They will have their last hurrah and their last war and neither will have the earth for their victory. This is Halloween. It's the time we laughingly invite them out of hell. This is a time for us to be aware of what's going on and be above it, doing something about it. He says, the keepers of the flame of life and liberty and mercy and justice and the age of Aquarius, they shall have the earth, for they are the Lord's, and the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. Therefore, watch, watch and be watchful, but with joyous heart, determination, and absolute foreknowledge of the victory. Know that it is God and his servant sons and daughters who shall claim and have the earth for the future generations who deserve it, who are ready who are cheering you on from inner levels and will give anything to be an embodiment at your side in this hour, beloved. Oh, how they would join you if they could. Alpha's priorities remain the same. They are the same, beloved. And therefore, let us make them our own. Let us call for the cutting free of the light bearers. Let us not be satisfied to be limited by the false hierarchies of church and state to this size or that number. Let us know that on the morrow, we shall overturn all that opposes this light and reaching every heart of light upon this planet in his own language, in his own place. Let it be done, I say. And let us willing to pay this price. For only if we pay the price can earth endure in the course of the ascending spiral of our God has decreed for this planetary home. Then let us not rest. Let us not at any time lay down our sword. Let us remember that this is the hour of supreme vigilance and diligence. This is the eternal price that must be paid by those who are in, emb in, in embodiment. For if you are not alert to the wiles of the fallen ones and their investigations and their subtleties and their mechanizations and all manner of effort to deceive and trap you in your words and in your acts, then I tell you, be assured that you must become aware of it as K-17 is aware of it, as Lanello is aware of it, as the Darjeeling Council is aware of it. Blessed ones, you should not so easily trust the stranger. You should not so easily rest upon the belief in the milk of human kindness. You must be understanding of that which every saint of God has faced at that hour when that light was to expand 
to the level of the Christ or the Buddha, for that is the exact moment when you must recognize that the light itself has enemies. And when you embody that light, you become the target, for they must target the person who is the bearer of that light. Make no mistake about it, beloved. Those powers that be in church and state, as well as the riffraff that are supported by them, do want this organization destroyed, this messenger stopped, this land taken from you, and the church universal and triumph to be quickly past history. Blessed ones, they are determined. Make no mistake about it. And that is why my gratitude is profound and I am up and doing and in my midst and in your midst. And therefore it is important to give me the authority to act in your name. And therefore be detailed in your letters that you write to me and burn immediately in those prayers that you offer in the silence of your heart, knowing well that wherever you may be, there may be the listening device of someone spying out your liberty to pray to your God in this altar, at this altar. Well, let them hear if they would listen. For I, El Moria, have also walked in their midst. And I tell you that their hauteur and their pride does go before the downfall and their own self-destruction. Yet they see it not. And they are blinded by their own lust for power. I tell you, beloved, they will laugh to think that I may speak through this messenger, that I am an ascended master. But I tell you, he who laughs last, laughs best. And our Lord shall hold them in derision. To know, to dare, to do, and to be silent. This is the motto of the initiates of the Great White Brotherhood. Remember it. It will serve you well. For the trap is laid, and you must see to it that you do not spring that trap by being off guard. Remember, beloved, to tend the altar of the heart. Remember to stay in, a, in, a light, in alignment with your beloved Holy Christ self and shun the folly of rebellion and disobedience to God's laws. For when you lose touch, you immediately place yourself in alignment with those who seek to destroy the soul, whereas you are the builders and you are one with the builders of eternity. Any out of alignment state of mind or discord in the feeling world, beloved, any of it at all, even that which may result in illegal acts, however well intended or self-justified, demands a frightful pay, uh, price, a, demands a frightful price that must be paid by somebody. I trust you will not create any more karmic debts for me. And I will be here that I will have to pay for, for you, and that you will not create any more karmic debts for yourselves that you will have to spend time paying for. I trust you have therefore learned some lessons from the labors of Hercules and from the lifetimes of Hercules. And I trust you will understand that the reason your beloved mighty Hercules is so close to the physical octave is that there came a time in Earth's history 
when evil was so rampant and spacecraft and aliens, and indeed there were giants in the earth and there were gods, that Hercules himself did volunteer to take embodiment to deal with those watchers, to deal with their creation half animal and half human. And therefore he did descend in another era. And he did go forth all of his days and all of his hours to challenge those fallen ones. And therefore, heart and mind and soul and spirit, one pointed. Hercules did save the day for planet Earth at one point in an era past. And he did save the Earth for you, beloved, to be here again in this time. And now he is grateful that you have chosen to call forth his electric presence and to walk the earth, not as Morius Chilas, not only as Morius Chilas and Michael's Chilas, but also as the Chilas of Hercules and Amazonia. Blessed ones, the myths you hear are indeed myths. Stories told many times over and embellished. But at the seed of it, at the heart of it, there is truth. And there is the realization that one so great a being of light could actually receive the dispensation of Almighty God to embody and then become so involved in dealing with evil incarnate as to create karma and as to also be trapped by that barrage of human creation, Nephilim creation, and all manner of manipulation of the sacred science to have reincarnated thrice, three times, in order to expiate the karma incurred for literally rolling in the mud of earth with these fallen ones. Do you understand this? He had, he had to come two more times because in saving the earth, he created the karma, which caused him to have to, to return two more times to work it off. Here you can understand the sacrifice of one so beloved. Here you can understand the heart who would not stand by and see the infamy of these fallen ones on planet earth and did forego the octaves of perfection and light and God dominion. And therefore you see that by the planetary climate of gross heart darkness and delusion, even such as one can become detoured and make karma. Therefore, do not chide yourselves for your mistakes but learn from his sacrifices and his victories as well as from his mistakes. And also know that for an ascended master or a being of cosmos to volunteer to take physical embodiment is indeed a calculated risk. And many have found themselves in this very predicament, beloved ones, and have had to come home the long, hard row of karma yoga until the coming of St. Germain and Portia and the dawn of the Aquarian age and the dispensation of the violet flame. And therefore, I tell you, Hercules, wrestling with the physical monsters, now becomes for you the exorcism by the ruby ray of the Holy Ghost of their astral counterparts. And although it be hard spiritual work and a certain physical and emotional and mental stress and strain, beloved, when you have that victory, you know peace at a new level of victory. And you know a new level of peace. And each time you have the victory, that sacred fire of the Kundalini, Kundalini is rising and you experience a new heaven and gradually your souls are meshing with the etheric octave so that the transition called death, when it comes upon you in the natural order of things, will be nothing at all for you will have already been living in that octave for decades while yet in the physical body. 
Know the path, beloved. And know that the hour will come when you need money in the bank. That is momentum of light in the causal body and momentum of light's victory. For at that moment of challenge and initiation, you will require all of your past experience as an initiate of the sacred fire and of your deafness in wielding your sacred sword of the word. You will require all the momentum to slay the foe that comes with the declared intent to destroy you. And these agents have declared their intent to destroy you. That is their purpose. Therefore, would you allow it? No. 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 Then see to it, he says. The greatest danger you have is in incorrectly and improperly assessing the schemes of these fallen ones and the intensity of their intent. They will stop at nothing to achieve their end. Look at what you read in the news today. Look what's happening in the, in the government of the United States. Look what's being proposed. And you say, this is insanity in its highest form. There it is. That's what he's talking about. Therefore, there does come a time in the path of the Chila when the victory will be to the one who is determined that he is undefeatable in God. He will not even admit the possibility of failure or defeat of any kind. That one-pointedness you will gain from all those of the first ray, but not more from anyone than that which you would gain from Hercules himself. That momentum held in the heart of Hercules, beloved, allow many fallen angels to be taken and bound so that life could be resumed and so the foundations could be laid and finally and laid that finally in these centuries the united states of america could be established do not be moved or agitated do not be distressed or burdened guard the physical body guard the the balance of the mind and the emotions center yourself in the will of god put on the whole armor of archangel michael daily that is give the whole tape of archangel michael daily and move forward claim your victories and have them be compassionate toward all who are caught in the gray area of indecision for lack of their own momentum, as I have said. But be fierce in invoking the judgment upon those who have sworn enmity against the woman and her seed, Sana Kamaro and his own. Be fierce, beloved, for out of the fearness of the white fire and the wrath of the great Kali and the circle and sword of Estrella, so all things shall come to pass in divine order. Count your moments now as sands descending in the hourglass, moment by moment. Use your time well, for the timing is upon us. The timing is upon us. The timing is upon us, beloved. Therefore, heed the word and the direction of the messenger when it is given, and in your best effort, fulfill it. It is not good <clears throat> to lose the hours when you are called to prayer for the cosmic purpose. It is not good to disregard the words from the altar, and it is dangerous not to have the armor of your pearls of wisdom with you throughout the day that you might cherish the morsels of the words that are given. Therefore, beloved, as I am come down to you this hour, may we set the standard of certain level of religious devotion and practice and working the works of him that sent us, even Sanat Kumar. And let us count it a privilege to transmit this light 
and this magnet to the electrode here for the drawing in, I tell you, of the one million chilas of the will of God. It is possible. Even as it was time for the one million fallen ones who are the sponsors or who were the sponsors, I should say, of Mordred and his seed to be taken to the court of the sacred fire. Now let their places be filled, I say, by one million chilas in, in embodiment, because you recognize that you in your heart are the magnet for their coming. It must be so, beloved. You, we have no alternative but the will of God. Oh, will of God, beloved. Oh, the spanning across the octaves of the devotion of your hearts. It is beautiful to behold as are the increase of your prayer, the incense of your prayer, and the beautiful angel devas of Zarathustra, who rejoice to dance with angels and to create above your heads letters of living fire as you release the fire of your hearts and have done so with such great fervor in my name and even in this whole weekend. You've done so well. If you could see how close the saints of heaven are to earth when you are in your assembly, not only would you weep, but you would see as runners of the race that the goal of victory is in sight and you would desire to pump harder and to get to that finish because you will know that your victory in the race will count not alone for a million, but many millions to come. Blessed ones, with my newfound freedom, and I take it with great care and caution as to what I must do and make first things first, I take my leave of you for this hour. It comes a new day of cosmic freedom for me and for you. Let us be up and doing. Therefore, I send you, I truly send you for the victory of Almighty God in this cradle, our holy church. For in that cradle is the universal man child. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Divine Mother, I, Moria, say to you that I shall not leave this hour until we kneel and pray together in our gratitude for our oneness, for our love, for our victory. I teach, I touch each one, and I kiss the brow, for I am here to initiate you. Now let us pray. Our Father, who has accorded us new opportunity by the heart of the Divine Mother, by the hearts of Chilas of the will of God, we bow in gratitude for this opportunity to be together and to see the horizon, the flame of Earth's victory. We come, our Father, to fan that flame by thy breath of the Holy Spirit, which thou hast placed within us. I call forth the heart of the Father, seraphim of God, beings of fire and salamanders for the protection and absolute physical, uh, uh, the, the protection uh, absolute of the physical bodies, the emotional, mental, and etheric bodies, and the souls and chakras of my chilas here and everywhere upon earth. I call for that protection, Father, and thou knowest it is needed. Therefore, let thy holy angels tend them and let the liar and the murderer be exposed and apprehended and let those of evil and malintent be reduced according to their hatred of the Christ within these our own. I, Moria, do bow with the knights and ladies of the flame of this Camelot come again, and I do caution them to keep the fire of the altar burning 
and not stray from this place where the victory must be fought and won. Therefore, I, El Moria, pledge myself to my own and to hierarchy of the great white brotherhood to bring about these necessary implementations of change, of building, of alchemy, of transmutation, of refinement of hearts and souls and physical protection to our own everywhere. I send my prayer into the heart of Mary, in the heart of Guan Yin. In thy name, O Father, Mother, we are one. And I, your son and servant, Moria, am eternally grateful to thee and my own world without end. In the name of the Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. And I do seal now my own, see, sending the ray of the ruby focus to the third eye and crown of each one. May you see and know all that is at hand, and may the wisdom of God flower in you, that you may have to give the nectar of the Buddha to all who will come. My beloved, I love you. I always loved you, and I always shall. Pax Vobiscum.